Okay, so Rich, tell me this, right? So let's say you've got a woman who's who's had uh, a high notch count and she's she's been with multiple men and she decides she wants to change and uh, settle down and she she doesn't want to live that life anymore. What does she what does she do? You can't you can't take away the fact that that exists from her past. A smart woman would hide that from her past. She's not going to overtly, you know, walk around with a T-shirt that says, hey, guys, I've slept with 50 men and here's all their names sort of thing. Um, that that would be an incredibly stupid choice for a woman to make to broadcast that information. Unfortunately, though, women do that kind of by osmosis by their digital footprint. Um, I've talked about this in some videos before, but there's this trend now on social media. I mean, you'll see it on TikTok. There's a video that I've done on my YouTube channel the last couple of months where this mid 30 year old woman, I think she was in Tulum at the time and she's breaking down her date with a guy and why she's no longer seeing him. Basically she's saying, you know, I spent, you know, four or five dates with him. Uh, we slept together and then he kind of ghosted me and went away and I don't know why and men are children, but I'll find my true love sort of thing. So the point here is that women do leave a digital footprint. Um, it would be, or it should be encouraged that fathers and mothers have the conversation with their daughters. That is, your value is based on your beauty and your purity. It always has been. It's been that way throughout history. You can drink as much Kool-Aid on the toxic feminism lie as you want. It's simply not true. A high value, virtuous, successful man that knows what his worth is will every single day of the week choose a pure clean woman over a woman that's been with a whole bunch of guys and party through her 20s saying that i've gotten right with god and that i want you to look past me past my past is what beta males fall for that's what the plugged in guys fall for now what's the dangers of that well setting aside the fact that there's a higher probability that she'll be a single mom there's a higher probability that she's had abortions there's a higher probability that she's got mental disorders these are all facts they've been proven in studies um it, once you set that aside one of the biggest problems for guys is when they get involved into a marriage with a woman that's been with a lot of guys the probabilities of her forming a healthy pair bond to him throughout the marriage and staying married to him happily is dramatically lower um there's lots of data uh, published on this. I think the Teachman study would be the main one. You guys can look that up. But essentially, um, a virgin is a far better choice than a woman that slept with 11 guys. Okay, so so Rich, I was I was thinking about which way I take this conversation. There was two questions I was going to ask you, but just based on what you said, I'm going to ask you my next question, which I've got here, right? Now, I'm a Muslim, okay? And um, there is a, uh, a philosopher who was uh, quite prominent in the 11th and 12th century. His name was Al-Ghazali. He was one of the early contributors to when Islam was in its golden age. And um, he, in his book, he states, there are eight qualities which render a conjural life happy and which must be sought in the woman in order to assure the perpetuity of the marriage. Mm. Piety, good character, beauty, a small dowry, ability to bear children, virginity, good lineage, and she should not be a close relative. That makes sense. It's a, that's a very reasonable list. It's interesting because now, okay, so let me, let me ask you the second question, right, on, just on the back of that, right? If this is what is prescribed to be a high-value woman, which is going to obviously, you know, the whole idea of this is that, you know, if you are marry a woman with these sorts of intangibles, mm -hmm. then you're going to have more chance of success of a successful marriage and then the children that you bear and the family that you raise, you know, is going to be a success. But what about men, right? Why do these same elements not, you know, why are they not prescribed to men? They, ne they haven't been in history. That's just mm -hmm. a fact, right? They haven't been prescribed in any mm -hmm. culture to men. But why is that the case? Well, men and women are different, aren't they? And I think that's one of the areas that culture and society gets wrong terribly today is that they is they is they try to blur the lines as much as possible. They say men and women are equal. Men and women are exactly the same. Whatever a man can do, a woman can do. And for some areas of life, that's true. Uh, a man can drive a car from point A to point B, and so can a woman. The man will probably park the car better at point B than the woman will. And that's just that's just a reality of life. You know, there's certain things that men and women are better at. Women are better at empathy. Women are far better at love and sympathy for, you know, things are more agreeable than men are. You know, 
men are stronger. You know, we've got uh, a third or maybe 50% more upper body strength than women do. Uh, so we have strengths and weaknesses. And I don't know why society and culture keeps trying to perpetrate this lie that we're exactly the same when we're not. And one of the things that differs from men is uh, they can get away with sleeping with multiple women and still fall in love with a woman, commit to her for life and raise a happy, healthy family just fine. But the same is not true for women. Promiscuity and sexual partners play a completely different role in a woman's life than a man does. And in fact, I mean, if you were to tell a woman, well, he slept with 20 guys, she'll pro she, she probably won't care. In fact, it's desirable when you survey a, a lot of women that they want a guy with some experience because there's some social proof there. there there's some pre-selection that 20 other women wanted to be with him. It's one of the reasons why... You know, there's this funny joke out there that like that um, a woman today would rather date or sleep with a married man than be with a loser that lives in his mom's basement because the married guy has pre-selection, right? Another woman has chosen him. He has resources that he can distribute and share, which is why, you know, you get these phenomenons that actually happen. It's interesting, though, isn't it? It's a good question. I think I'll tell you my take on this, honestly speaking, right? I'll give you my opinion on this. I think that... You know, when you have a, a relationship, you have one relationship, a second and a third and a fourth, right? As soon as you get to that fourth, fifth, and you start and you start building on it, whether it's a woman or a man, my opinion is, right, you carry baggage from one to the other. You do. Okay? And what happens is you may be involved in a relationship, whether it's male or female, where you have trauma in that relationship. And that mm -hmm. trauma can carry over to the later part of your life. And then by the time you get with somebody, whether you are male or female, if you've had a high, and I don't think it's so much solely about the notch count. I think it's about the mental implication as well mm. that you have. So if you've had, you know, if you have a person who's had 10 relationships, 15 relationships, long-term ones with damage in, you know, in their relationships, and that person is in their thirties or forties, a woman or a male, mm. I think you're going to, you know, the, the person who gets with that individual is going to have to deal with a lot of problems and trauma. Yeah. I think you're right about the baggage part, and that and that definitely applies to women. I've noticed women that have been with a lot of guys have a lot more baggage. There's more of he hurt me, he cheated on me, he did whatever to me. And they never really seem to like suss through that. They never seem to work that out. I think men do carry baggage too. Um, you know, we all have been betrayed in our past. You know, women have done things that uh, have surprised us, have shocked us. It's one of the things that sends men down the rabbit hole of the red pill and you know, like the concepts that I talk about in my book and a lot of my videos is they find it because they've been betrayed, because they believed in something that wasn't a reality, that they're then shown a truth or a reality that's very uncomfortable, it's difficult, even painful for a lot of men. And they have to confront it. Um, men need to confront these realities. So I think guys that have that have done the work and they've confronted it, they come out better for it. But yeah, you're right. Men and women do carry baggage. It's just I see men dealing with the baggage better than women. Women seem to just carry it around and it never really seems to go away for them. Interesting, because this is this is what I this is where I kind of stand with this is that I think that a lot of the issues that you talk about when when selecting um, a good woman, I believe that a lot of them qualities but then you have additional qualities also apply to men but the difference is is that when a woman selects a man she needs that man to be a high value man in terms of his career as well and i don't think that applies necessarily this in the opposite direction but yeah. there are definitely crossovers between the two yeah because i mean the biggest difference is that men are viewed as success objects by women so their notch count doesn't really matter as long as they're successful they're competent they can make it rain they're they're strong they're virtuous you know they can look up to the guy that's that's what's most important to 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 women whereas for men women, women are are beauty objects so a lot of what women do today to try to make themselves more attractive to men like you'll see them online and they'll brag about their degrees and how smart they are and they have their own house and they have their own car well what they're defining is what men, is what makes men attractive and they think that if they behave and they act like men that they will be more attractive to men. But there's no man ever throughout history that's ever looked at a woman's degree on a wall, framed in mahogany with little letters after a name that said, oh yeah, look at the degree on her, that's hot. They're looking at her walking away in her nice yoga pants.
that's just <laughs> that's just the reality <laughs> that's just the reality i could sit here and uh, say whatever i want but that is that that is that is the it's reality, facts right? it's truth man yeah, it's fact, it's fact. i really hope you guys enjoyed that clip if you want to watch the full length podcast you can find that over here that clips from if you're newer to the channel make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment you'll find a bunch of useful links to my website my supplement line books and a bunch of other stuff have an amazing day peace out